What's going on, everybody? I'm your boy Retro Bliss, and you are on Retro Bliss Rewind. Say that three times fast, will you? <laughs> We're going to have some fun tonight. We're going to be talking about playing your retro video games on a CRT versus playing them on your modern screens. Now, there are benefits to both um, and different ways to do it on your modern TVs. Uh, and we're going to uh, talk with uh, some very special guests, and I'm going to bring them to you and uh, put them on screen here. So uh, here is Mike from Mike's Gaming Gala, and then we're going to bring Brian from uh bd retro mods a <laughs> brain fart and last but certainly not least our good friend dr scott hello from game closet what's going on fellas hey just, how much uh, just chilling here in the new year so um now you know all of you all of your collectors and all of your game players obviously um now you know i've I've been playing video games since uh, 1977, and when I was, when I was, uh, you guys know the story, when I got my Atari 2600 back in 1977, the year it came out, my dad would not let us put it on the color TV because of the burn-in, and we had to play on a little 13-inch uh, black and white television, and I didn't know what it was like to play in color even until I was an adult. <laughs> <laughs> but I do know, I do know that uh, after I got back in, you know, after I got uh, married and I started having kids and we got a Super Nintendo and I actually had a, a Sega Master System prior to that, um, that uh, we, we played, we did play uh, on, on CRTs a lot, you know, even PlayStation, um, well, yeah, you know, it wasn't really until early 2000s you know, that CRTs really started to fade off. You know, even PC oh, yeah. gaming. Say, even it, PC was, it was a core did, thing until probably about PS3, Xbox 360 before you really started getting into the, you know, the LCD TVs. Yeah, when this computer so right here was announced, the uh, Apple G4 uh, iMac, when that was announced, uh, Steve Jobs he decreed that the CRT is dead. And that's when you really started seeing people move away from that with computers and everything. Well, he was Steve not Jobs wrong. said so. Then. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, he wasn't I'm, wrong. But he wasn't wrong, but, you know, unfortunately, he, the water he tried to walk on sank. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but, you know, um, as I got older, started working 60 hours a week and I kind of faded into obscurity and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, what video games I did play basically were mostly on PC um, for many, many years. Um, however, when I got back into retro gaming, um, I felt the need and, and started collecting. I felt the need that I, I need to start grabbing some CRTs. You know, my mom and dad, they, they uh, sold their house and they had some old TVs. Um, and we had a we had a we I had a TV here, we weren't really using. It. I thought, man, I'm gonna use it, I'm gonna use it. So I I started hooking them up. So um, anyway, um, for me personally, my personal opinion is if I can play um, uh, these these old retro games that were meant to be played, that were designed to be played, I should say, uh, on a CRT. That's the way I would prefer to play them, but not a lot of people uh, agree with that sentiment. What do you guys think? Well, I'll actually surprise some people. Um, as a purist who scowls at Brian every time he drills into the side of an old console. <laughs> I knew um, that was coming up. <laughs> you knew it was coming. You said that earlier. I'm, I'm always good at you. Yeah, we um, uh, I basically play no games on CRTs. Not because I don't like it. I'm sure we're going to get into all the benefits of it. Like uh, a lot of, especially when you started to get into the uh, Genesis and the Super Nintendo, there were actual techniques like dithering and stuff like that that they would use yeah. that 
are completely lost if you're not playing on a CRT. But, uh, and I used to have a really, really good one. I think it's in my former in-law's basement now. Um, but I just don't have the space for them. Because like, I don't have space for a television that is dedicated to retro gaming. Um, as much as I would love to, I mean, my oldest son is probably got another year living with us and then maybe I can put one into his, his room. But, uh, I've got a couple small ones that I use to test systems and sometimes I'll play on those, but the vast majority of my gaming, in fact, almost exclusively is with, uh, modern televisions. And I know that will surprise some people. That, that, that surprises me because I, for some reason, I would have thought that you would have had at least one LC, or I'm sorry, one CRT, even if it was a 13 inch someplace that you. Just oh, I do. Played. I've got a couple small, like 12, 13 inch okay. ones that I use for testing systems, but I don't use them to game. They're in my not, garage not right now. All. Okay. Yep. I'm, I use them mostly as testing because, you know, if I want to play on a CRT, uh, sure, but now I got to go get it, set it up, bring the console, set it up. Right. When it's as opposed as opposed to having a dedicated room for a nice big twenty four inch CRT, where I can plug my retro consoles in, and I know, uh, especially with your systems from the nineties, so Master System, uh, sorry, uh, Genesis, Super Nintendo, PlayStation, Nintendo sixty four, um, so much. Uh, uh, so much of the techniques that they use are designed for CRTs. Absolutely. And yes, it's a new uh, retro bliss drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> well, I I do have one 13 inch one. As a matter of fact, right, <laughs> it's right up oh, wrong way. No, nope, that is the right way. It's right there. Oh yeah, I see it there. And uh, I I have it for mainly for two reasons. One. Um, I do have a couple of consoles that occasionally I will hook up that I, I don't have the ability. Well, I do have the ability, but not so easily to hook these things up to an LCD. Like, for example, a, an Atari 7800. Uh, there's just no way I can hook that up right now unless I hook it up through a VCR and then, yep. you know, and then through my retro tank. And I'm not doing all that. Um, and then I also, I have a light gun. My, a couple my of light VCR. Gun with the yeah. converter, yeah, <laughs> right here. Yeah, oh, you know the yeah. pain. Um, but this I didn't throw holes into the console. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you can AV mod them, but don't rip, don't drill any holes. <laughs> Phil had to remind us to uh, be PG, and you are threatening my PG status on this channel. <laughs> Shame. Put your drill away. But uh, this, this past summer, I, I got hold of a, an NES for free. And um, I, I, I was at uh, Retro Taku uh, Video Games in Detroit, near Detroit. And this dude had one in his garage forever. And he was giving it to, to, to those guys. And they were just going to give it away to somebody. And, and they just gave it to me. And I said, yeah, I'll toss it in my car. So I got a light gun and everything. I brought it home. The thing would work. I scrubbed the living crap out of it. And it worked. So now my little girl and I are playing Duck Hunt on that thing. And we played on this little uh, CRT right here, and uh, you know it's it, so much better with a bigger CRT. Absolutely, like, I, I wish there are I, definite reasons to have one. I wish I had the room because the largest CRT that I ever owned was a 25 inch RCA, and it was beautiful. And uh, and then when I when I was when I was in college at BGSU, which wasn't actually too long ago now that I think, when I first um, moved out here, I brought my TV from home. And then that TV died on me, so I had to go buy. I bought a a, a, a twenty inch Sony Trinitron. Uh, was it Trinitron? Not Trinitron. Uh, what what is that? Um, Ve Vega? No. It was the a Vega flat. was the flat screen. It, yeah. it, it was a flat screen. It was a twenty inch, and um, that's the one that I started playing Halo on my original Xbox. On uh, I was playing Halo Two on that, and it wasn't too long after that that I graduated to an LCD. But, uh you know, but those CRTs, I mean, some of those, some of those Vegas, the really big ones, like the 36 inches, those things are thicker than they are wide. I had, I had a um, Toshiba 36 inch. And back when I was a young man, I, I played football in high school. I used to, I used to be a lot, 
stronger. My back used to be a lot better than it is right now. That's probably why my back's bad now, but I can remember literally carrying that thing into the basement. Now I think about that. I can't even move my, <laughs> my 20, the last, 27. <laughs> yeah. The last, the last CRT I bought was in 2004. And when I moved from my first house to my second house, uh, it was me and two of my brothers were required to move that thing. It was that heavy. Wow. They're heavy, man. They are. No, no, they are because, um, like, for myself, I mean, I'll admit, I, I do, uh, you know, downstairs, kind of got my game room, and uh, I do run a 32-inch uh, Sony Trinitron, and nice. uh, um, I don't know how I got it down in the basement, and I don't know how I'm going to get it back out when the day comes that it dies. Um, but, uh, you know, <clears throat> the nice thing with CRTs is that, obviously, that's how they, the games were originally designed to be played. And like you said, there's different effects. Um, like think about like Mike Tyson's punch out, you know, trying, cause I think there's something there, I believe with like trying to fight Mike Tyson, that, like if you don't do it on a CRT, it's, it's a lot harder to, to pull off the win, you know? And, uh, hmm. um, you know, just because of the, uh, you know, the timing and stuff with the, uh, CRT compared to, you know, oh. LCDs and stuff. So, um, but the biggest thing for me, why I still hold on to a CRT more than anything, um, and I think someone just said it was it, it's, for the, it's it's the light gun games, yeah. and um, I I enjoy playing those with my son. Um, you know, I still have uh, you know the simple as Duck Hunt and other NES light gun games, uh, but I also have my Sega Saturn and even my Sega Dreamcast, you know, because Sega was big on all those different uh, light gun games. And uh, Mr. Chickens beat me to it. I was going to make that joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know that it'll, I don't know if it'll save that much weight off of them, honestly. <laughs> you know, I was thinking, I, I mentioned I carried a 36 inch, but I can remember now it was only downstairs. I, I didn't carry it upstairs. I carried it downstairs. I think I kind of just, I mosed it downstairs with the gravity helping me with the steps, you know, but yeah, those things are. But to go with like what Johnny said, though, the thing to keep in mind, though, is just, it, it, and what's already been mentioned also from you guys is just, you know, do you have the space for it? Is it worth right. the upkeep? Mm -hmm. I mean, because the thing is, they're not getting newer, you know, <laughs> they're, they're going to eventually go. And, yeah. and it's just, do you want to keep trying to go through that and how many can you really set up through your house, you know, to do it with, right. um, you know, and that's where there are options now that makes playing your retro consoles on and, you know, on a modern TV, a much better experience because I yeah. get it. Some people like they want the pure experience, like, you know, cause you still have some, like you got some like diehard Atari folks that like it's RF or nothing. You yeah. know, and uh, um, where, I mean, there's options out there where you can upscale your stuff and have it look really, really nice on, on a modern TV. And, and you know, um, yeah, there's the nostalgia but on a CRT, but just that graphic uh, fidelity you get. Like, 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 if you think about an NES game, like, it's like, I don't remember an NES game looking this nice, you know, like when you have the right stuff to upscale it. Um, and, you know, same can be said on yeah. other consoles as well. Now, but, can I mention something here? There's one thing that hasn't been brought up. The black. You will not get a pure black like you can on a CRT that you on a um, on an LCD or an, on a modern TV quite yet. I mean, it, they're getting there. They're getting there, but they're not quite there yet. When you when you play on a CRT, the blacks are black. They are black. They are black. Um, so that is one thing that um, you will get the experience when you're playing on a CRT. So yeah, I would I, I would say that. So for me, my desire to play stuff on the CRT, obviously, light gun is a huge thing. Um, but uh, so for the Atari uh, 2600, the 7800, the 5200, um, there's no techniques that they're using that require a CRT to make a difference. So when you're playing through emulation or if you're playing through your 2600 plus, 
like they just look so good and it's just a it's like like the uh the old uh csi things like you take that grainy footage and enhance 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 right <clears throat> and all of a sudden this thing that was two pixels you can see the name on the business card in his pocket um and the nes was mostly like that same with the master system but then when you get and i like the sega genesis was probably the most uh famous for this well maybe the nintendo 64 but the genesis um you play a sonic game in an emulator or like no matter or on my or on your analog without any of the uh crt screen effects um they look great but they don't look right and that's because they did the dithering checkerboard kind of thing which on a crt when you run through a waterfall it makes it look transparent but when you're playing it through emulation it looks like a checkerboard on top of you and it's effects like that and the dithering on the nintendo 64 nintendo 64 and playstation 1 look like garbage on modern monitors they look like absolute garbage because the pixel resolution is not good enough for those polygons and you're seeing like da, 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 da. So the anti-aliasing that they did was dithering, where you basically take the whole thing and you blur it just a little bit. And on a CRT, they still look pretty good. Even compared to, like, they still look retro. Obviously, they're not standing up to a PS5 right. or an Xbox One X. But mm -hmm. um, uh, on it, like, those, those games on modern televisions look terrible, like, to the point that I... I feel like it's like, ah, is this really worth playing? It looks that bad. Whereas on a CRT, it gets a pass because it's that little bit softer and it performs kind of an automatic anti-aliasing. For me, for me, and uh, <laughs> uh, one thing we we I don't I don't know if we touched on is the nostalgia factor too. It's just I don't know what it is. I I also think about you know uh, it goes back to the homebrew thing for me too. You know, um, people go, well, why would I want to play a homebrew? of uh galagon when i can play you know um uh, i can play the the real thing you know instead of you know the homebrew well because i'm i'm thinking about what could have been so that's why i want to play a color tv on a you know i'm thinking about man what if i could have played this on my dad's tv <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know i'm <laughs> <laughs> you see it, what I'm it saying? Makes, it, it, it makes me laugh that the big technological improvement for you was color. <laughs> it was, but hey, dude, I'm 50. I I'm, played on black and white TVs. I get it. I get it. I'm but. 58, bro. I'm 58. This uh, it, it was. It was a big deal. It was a big deal. I watched Kenny Anderson and Terry Bradshaw uh, going at it in black and white. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's the way it was. Yeah, I, I had a black and white TV in my room when I was a kid, uh, but I do not remember ever hooking a video game system up to it. I don't think I had a video game system when I had a black and white TV. It's like, get home from school, watch The Amazing Spider-Man or Spider-Man or whatever I was watching. Yeah, The Amazing Spider-Man on black and white and then go do my homework or whatever. But uh, uh, I... I I never hooked one up to a, a black and white until I got curious and what I wonder what that would look like. And I went, Oh my God. <laughs> and I took it right back out to the living room. I right. played Atari on, on black and white. Sometimes we had the big color TV that it was usually attached to and we play would play on, yeah. but then we had a smaller black and white TV that if my dad was watching something and we were able to hook it up and play it on that. So what's I, up, I Poger? That experience. What's going on? Poger? Hey, Poger. Miss you, bro. Um, Let's see. Go ahead. Sorry. But yeah, no, it was pretty much done. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I was just gonna say, but to the point of that too. I mean, the thing is, is that um, again, they were designed for CRT. There, there's no question there, and and like everything, there's always a nostalgia factor of of you know, hence why we collect what we collect. Um, but uh, I do see that uh, Johnny put, men, mentioned about you know the games via emulation uh, being rough otherwise, and, and, and you're right. I mean, unless you have, I mean, if you try to take your console, hook it straight up, even just straight out composite, hook it up to your modern TV, it's not going to be a good experience. No. And um, but the key is, is if you have those 
upscaling tools. And obviously, you know, the more popular ones right now, and I think Dr. Scott even showed them, is like your retro tank yep. type. Of, you know, that's, you know, that's the real popular one right now. Or your frame meister was really popular for a while till it got right. really expensive. But, oh, yeah. but, but I mean, a real cheap mm -hmm. one, um, and you, you can find them for, and it, and it has a lot of features, is the GBS Cs, because um, it's an open source um, uh, upscaler. And, uh, it's it's i mean for what it does for the price point i mean it, it's a very very good upscaler so like if the retro tinks out of what you want to really spend for your retro gaming um you can look at that but i do think those are impor an important piece if you're doing just like connecting composite or trying to do rgb or things like that uh, to get that um crystal clear look and, or effects to make it look right like what poger mentioned because again there's and a lot so of features in those to do that a lot of like you you know you know another another drink i'm a i'm a big fan of the uh the analog systems and uh a lot of them what do you mean? most of them yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah okay. uh, i've got every single one of them um and i love the fact like uh, Genesis games on the analog. I've I've dialed in. I want. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the channel uh, My Life in Gaming. They yes. do such thorough videos on all the angles. And it's like here's all the settings we recommend, and here's everything. You, man, I would sit and watch through it like twice, and then play with all those settings till I got it perfect. Um, they do a really good job of emulating that CRT feel. Uh, for me, yeah, there's absolutely nostalgia for sitting in front of a CRT. It's just in my current setup, until all my kids move out, I don't have a practical place to do that. And by the time all my kids are gone, CRTs are really going to be tough to get. Uh, they're already hard to get. I, I remember getting... when you'd walk into Value Village and see like 30 of them. I, well, I but... remember walking into the local Walmart still, and they would have <clears throat> all the LCDs and plasmas on one wall, and then they just had whatever the CRT. the CRTs left behind off to the side until, you know, they, they stopped making them or what have you. And But I, I'm getting to the point where I'm not even using this hardly anymore, except for if I have to capture something for, oh gosh, I, it would have to be either my, my NES or... I, th I think that's about it. I think this, that's the only system I have left that I would even plug this in because everything else I have, I can I can capture uh, HDMI. Well, I, I don't want to say natively, either natively or artificially by using something else that I have hooked up to, like my, um, um, my Nintendo 64. I, I have an HDMI converter that's on the back of it and it has almost no lag at all. So I don't even use this anymore. For yeah. PlayStation One games, I use my uh, well. I either <coughs> use I either use my my PS One Classic or I use my PS Three, and any PS Three will run PS One games. It's just the yep. the ones that are backward compatible that'll run the PS Twos, and that's what I capture all my PS Two stuff on, is because that's the best way to do that as well is through my PS Three as opposed to running it through this because the resolution is still much better on the PS Three yeah. running it through there. So I I just I hate saying that I don't have a use for it other than fun now because that's all it is. Yeah. Just I use this for. I mean, I I have my 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 uh, NES hooked up to this little boy over here right now, and um, that's that's what I play on all the time. And I used to uh, have my play all my Atari stuff on there as well, but now that I have the twenty six hundred plus and I've got my. Um, Oh shoot, my Retron 77. I don't even have to bother hook, hooking anything up over here for fun because I can just go ahead and do it on a 4K display that yeah. I'm looking at right now. Although regular viewers will be very happy to know that the RCA Studio 2 that I got for Christmas, I did play on one of my two little CRTs. <laughs> That's cool. Hey, uh, I don't, you know how uh, Mike was talking about trying to keep things PG rated and how. Um, and Brian was kind of stirring it up, and uh, <laughs> just 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 simply by talking about it. Uh, hold on a second. Give me a moment. Give me oh, just did a somebody moment. make a Pac-Man comment? Well, no. I, That's uh, it. Hold on a minute. 
I want to visually stir him up. Uh-oh. <laughs> this, oh! Th this, this is, see the, see the uh, Telegames six switcher there? Yep. I no. bought that. I bought that AV modded. So that's AV modded, hooked into this, to this, and I have a, I have a 7800 hooked into this. I have a, I have a, I have a Coleco Vision hooked into this. So you're welcome. The only thing I don't have hooked into this is a, um, um. My Intellivisions, believe it or not, they do not, they look great just hooked into the, the coaxial. They, they, they really do. And I'm going to, I'm going to, um, uh, just put myself in here for just a minute and I want to show you guys something. Um, all I do is the use only my, way to hook up. Yeah, this is all I, all I need. If it'll focus, it doesn't focus in real good, but that goes into the TV, and then that goes into the the RF cable. Yep. You know, back in the day, the back in the yeah, day, it's an RCA to coax adapter, and honestly, all of your old consoles, whatever converter with a little switch game TV switch, get rid of them. Leave them in the box. Yep. Get. Get one of these and just use that for everything. Yeah, these Still, were. Zoom in on me. Uh, okay, hold on just a second. All right, so I also have a whole bunch of those as well. Uh, yep. I can get, get it to come in. Yeah, it's not gonna not gonna do it. But I also have a quick connect, so that way I go ahead and I screw that in there, and then, then this just slips right on to that. Yeah, some that's of them, nice. Some of some right. of them don't even need that. They just. Mm -hmm. Have the quick connect built in. I've got a couple of each. Yeah, some of them do. Some of them do. Nice, nice. So yeah, because yeah, I get unfortunately I get they're not fifty. Yeah, unfortunately yeah. they're not uh, fifty cents like Johnny Graphics says anymore. They're clo they're closer to three, four, five, five bucks. But uh, I got a whole bag of them from uh, Amazon. I got this whole bag of them. I think it was like uh, six bucks. Yeah, like, Johnny oh, Graphics wow. says. He got okay. it for like 50 cents back in the day when Radio Shack was actually around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just recently bought those because if you if you try to find them anywhere, you're going to find one or two in a package and you're right, they're like 6 bucks a piece. Yeah. But, I but what like, I do is with both my CRTs, I just leave one of those on the back all the time. That's a part of the TV now because I only ever use it to plug in one of these old systems, so Yeah. Yeah, why take yeah, why take it off if you don't have to? Um yeah. And and when I was uh, playing um, the Atari 2600 last summer and I had it on this little table over here, you know, that's how I had it hooked up to this thing over here as opposed to sitting on this stand. But uh, interestingly, though, if you need to go the opposite way, of which I just bought something, I have it on the back table over here, I have an HDMI to, uh, not RCA, a, a HDMI to AV converter. <laughs> Composite, yeah. And composite, yeah. So that way I can go the opposite way because there's a video that I'm supposed to be filming here hopefully soon. It was supposed to be last week, or but it didn't happen. And I also have a splitter, so that way I can have... Uh, we're going to be filming uh, from a, a Super Nintendo to a CRT because the game is... It is a light gun game. But I need to capture footage. So if I'm running it through a splitter having it going uh, to one TV and then the other going to my to my computer <laughs> so I can actually capture. On a recent acquisition that Rock'em Sock'em might have yes, got it is. Oh, Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we've been trying to find a good time to get together to do this, and it's just been kind of like, you know, either I'm sick or something else is going on. or you know. So John and I are trying to get together so we can try to get that done because that's, I that's think... A good video. That, that's a very shocking delivery he got yes it was oh. and I, I i don't want to give that away here because yep. it'll be a very very interesting video and <clears> it was <throat> a very awesome acquisition that he got hold of so look for that hopefully very soon so what now Just let me ask you guys a question when you guys when you guys do play on a modern tv do you use scan lines no i don't 
I turned them on, and for some reason, it even looks artificial to me. I mean, it just doesn't. It some some of them do a pretty good job, but I think that simply because it's not on a on, on a on a on a glass tube, mm-hmm. it's just it's it just looks fake to me. And maybe psychologically, I, my my head is just going, "Well, doggone it, that's fake." That just just make. But then why would I be hooking it up to an LCD if I'm if I'm wanting CRT lines? I understand that there are people out there who are going, yeah, I kind of have to have it. I get it. But for me, no, it's just got to be, you know, clean. For for me, only with uh, Genesis, uh, specifically for what I mentioned, like some of the games just ab- absolutely don't look right unless you, they've been filtered to kind of replicate uh, a CRT. Not all the games, but you know honestly my favorite i'm not a huge uh genesis guy i like the genesis but there's probably a dozen games i like to play and half of them are sonic games and they all use that waterfall technique and i don't like the waterfall not looking semi-transparent so i i use it i've got my uh analog uh sg or mg um set up to uh to have scan lines for that and kind of replicate the dithering yeah, it really depends. Uh, I mean, for the most part, I, I usually don't use scan lines because, again, I, I just I like the crispness that comes from because I said, like, you know, again, as much as I love a CRT playing, getting that original experience, it's also another amazing experience when you do see those like old Nintendo games and things like that just have that very as cool, nice as they can look. Yeah, as nice as they could look. It's like wow, I never thought an NES game could look this nice, you know, and, um, you know, and that's a key. But I also think it depends on what you're using, because, again, we're just generically talking CRT and modern TV, you know, because another piece to that is do you have the proper upscaler or some type of mod to help get it to where the fidelity needs to be? Because if you don't, you're going to want something like scan lines to help. The other thing is, is also what size television are you are you using? Because I can tell you even with something like the Atari 2600 Plus from my own experiences just as I keep testing with it, um, you know, you put it on a real big television. I mean, the 2600 games, look, I mean, again, they were flat shapes, right? So, mm-hmm. I mean, the 2600 looks perfectly fine no matter what size you put it on. But when you start putting on some 7800 games, like, it might look really good on that 20 inch or 25 inch, you know, flat screen TV that you're putting on, but all of a sudden you put it on a 65 inch, you know, 4k television. And it looks like a blurry mess. Yeah. That 7,800 game could be an absolute mess. And a good example is pop and Xevious. And that'll say a lot. I mean, it's just because again, they didn't, they, you know, they, it wasn't their fault. They didn't think, in the future of oh we're going to have this high scale stuff so the resolution sizes of the pixels was so small for those games that it just doesn't look fully right and uh um that's just another thing to keep in mind so that was a much more in-depth answer to a simple question but uh uh so yeah for the most part though i try to stay away from the lines because uh, i really like the christmas on the 8 and 16 bit now when you start getting higher up you know some filter yeah is necessary is so. it me though but when when you play some of the games that are originally for crts and i know the dithering effect does you know come into play <laughs> here and there but is it me or am i just imagining that some games look a, a little more flattened as opposed to having some kind of depth to them yeah yeah i would i would say so again uh if you're you using different colors on a in a CRT palette yeah. will make things maybe look a little more like, whereas uh, on an HD TV, they will look, you know, bright poppy colors, but on a CRT, they will be more muted and that would give you more distance. And absolutely designers would use that all the time. Um, cause you know, cause uh, yeah. I, I would imagine that that's that other people were, were thinking possibly the same thing because I even go back to my fine art classes and when we think about color theory and stuff like that, how you can have different colors next to one another and they will look 
the same color can like like maybe like a uh, something that might look tan next to a light blue may look like a brown next to a different color, and then if yep. you remove that from the environment, now of course the CRTs sometimes you'd be in the store just like any TV. You're especially with CRTs though. I can remember my dad going into like a Sears or something, and and he'd be like he'd be going well this RCA doesn't look as good as say this you know Sony or whatever. And, and then you can see, like, the, you know, kind of the differences. <coughs> Plus, you know, people would be messing with the hues and such. But I, I think that once you get off of that palette, if you will, that CRT palette uh, and that particular technology and move it over, yeah, you, you, you're, you're dealing with something completely different color-wise. And I think that uh, the, the way that it's being translated, I think, ends up, well... It's it not true to intention. Right. It's not that, very well put. It's not true to intention. because yeah, it, it doesn't just... make it wrong. It's just not the use that they intended for it. And the other thing, and I know uh, we were chatting a little bit before, you've got a similar background to me with the artistic uh, fine art stuff. Um, there is a big difference between color theory and light theory. Light theory. It's, Light theory. So, and this was, a, I remember being in high school, being in all the art classes and having a fight with my English teacher because she was trying to prove a point. She's like, well, what happens when you combine all the colors? Oh. And I said, you get black because that's color theory. You combine all the pigments. If they're pure pigments, you get black. She well, we meant white because when, when you shine a white light through a spectrum, you get all the colors. Right. Um, and so... How and that's why when you're doing art, there's a difference between RGB and CRT, uh, CRTK, or CMYK. CMYK. Thank you. I I had our title stuck in my head with a CRT, <laughs> CMYK. Like because it's completely different ways of dealing with the colors. Right. Because anytime I go to send something out to a printer, uh, well, especially if I'm if I'm designing something for the web, I make sure it's in RGB. But if I'm designing something that's yep. going to be printed, it's always CMYK. And when and when yet whenever you swap one to the other, it uh, one to the other, it's not quite right. Nope, it has to be designed. It has to be designed the way that you are <laughs> are intending, as we yep. as you said a few minutes ago. So yep. yeah, the, very good point. Now, can I say something here? We I know we're we are specifically talking about. CRTs versus modern TVs, and we're assuming that we're talking about console to screen transition, okay? But, you know, I I do a lot of emulating. You guys all know that uh, on the channel. We do a lot of live gameplay here. But, um, and so with emulation, I, when I talk about scan lines, when I, when I you know, you can add scan line, Mm -hmm. um, in emulation a lot. And I think if you're talking about scan line, it depends on the, the software that is, that you're talking about. They're not um, all created equal. They're not. Um, Stella is very, very versatile. There are a lot of, a lot of, uh, variations within Stella that can be used to, um, uh, um, uh, variate the scan lines. Even uh, you can add a scan line. You can add the the um, the width of the scan line. Uh, you can change the phosphorus of the screen. You know, you put all these different things together uh, to get an appearance um, to to make it the way you want it to look. Now, is it going to look exactly like you know a real CRT? Absolutely not. I never will. But like I said, some people, they cannot get a CRT. That may be why they would want a, a scan line experience because they, sure. can't, they don't have the opportunity, yep. you know. Um, it's, getting, it's getting much more difficult to find them. Well, I remember when I was uh, cleaning up my dad's house because he had passed away and we were... <laughs> You know, we cleaned it all out, and there were a few uh, items that I said, well, let's take, uh, he had a couple of dehumidifiers and stuff, and I said, let's take that over to the local uh, recycling place, because they had a um, a place where you could take televisions and monitors and, and old appliances and stuff in Lorain County, and we walked, uh, we, we drove, we drove it in there, and, and you drove in this long 
this long corridor and you come in and you don't even have to get all the cars just like wherever you had it's like oh it's in the back seat or it's in the you yeah. know in the, in the truck and they had and then they take your kid yeah they take your kids too yeah but they What's have they take in the back seat pallets of crts and uh, yep. uh, tvs and pallets of, of crt monitors i remember i had i had a sony a huge sony trinitron um uh computer monitor and i was so excited when i bought it and then i was just as excited to get rid of it because the thing was an absolute friggin mammoth and oh and they just, heat up your room oh my gosh yeah I, yeah but it was it was so beautiful to finally get and i got it dirt cheap too but when i no one wanted to buy it. No one wanted to buy it. I said, it's got to go. So I took it over there. And they, they had all these pallets. And they would, you know, they would just plastic wrap the pallet, put it, you know, put another pallet on top, plastic wrap that. And there'd be like, like two or three layers high of CRTs. And I was like, and I know that they're just going to take these things, take all their components out and whatever. But it just yeah. blew my mind because that's what was happening to all these things. Ten years ago, you couldn't give them away. And now right. you don't. And and it's it's there. It's not even that people want lots of money for it. Is that they're still in that mentality? Like I'll I'll look up on like Craigslist, Kijiji for Canada, um, you know CRT every once in a while just to see what's out there, see what they're going for. People don't even put them up because they think that they're worthless and that nobody wants them. So when one does go up, everybody's trying to jump on it. All these retro gamers because absolutely they're. Like, despite the fact that I do not play on CRTs much, if at all, um, there is absolute validity to it. And that, that experience is, it is different and it is part and parcel of that retro gaming. And it's a great experience. It's just not a practical one for a lot of people. I wish I had the room. If, if I had the, I could probably get a 19 inch uh, CRT in here easily, but anything bigger than that. It would be impossible because it, you know this little this little room here. I just I've already filled it to the brim, and I have no. I know all about that. Out. Yeah. <laughs> so two things here. Uh, going back to one of Jerome's uh, comments about the uh, who would have thought we would have had fifty inch or bigger TVs. Yeah, you're exactly right. And, and when a lot of these games were created, I mean, they never thought that either. So you know, I. I know myself growing up, and I'm sure it's very similar for most people in here. I mean, there was usually just one TV in the household for the longest time, and it was about a 19-inch TV that you watched, you know, yeah. and you were lucky to have the remote with it. <laughs> you know, yeah. That was the remote. <laughs> and The big, uh, the big <laughs> brown box with the buttons. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and then once I was in high school, uh, you know, I finally got my own tv but it was a 13 inch you know 13 inch ge color tv that yep. I think everyone owned at some point in their life with the that, little built-in vcr <laughs> it did not have a built-in vcr oh i had a built-in vcr one it was like this big. <laughs> what's a vcr uh, <laughs> well hey i mean i'm not 58 so <laughs> but yeah but to that point though i mean it's not when you think about it it's not i'll really see myself that, out <laughs> it's, not, it's not really been that long don't ago. go away mad have bigger tvs so um so yeah i mean that that is something to consider when it comes to these retro games and that's why again you do start blowing them up they yeah. don't look yeah. good um but then the other one was a long time ago when it was mentioned about the Sindin light gun. And just, um, I might be wrong on this, but the other, the thing to keep in mind with the Sindin, it, I mean, it's awesome. But, I mean, as it stands right now, it, it's only compatible, um, I believe, with Windows and uh, Raspberry Pi units. So It's very limited, yeah. It's very limited. It's very cool, but it's very limited. And uh, and on now, I know they have plans that they eventually want to hit PS One, PS Two, Xbox, uh, NES, Dreamcast, and Saturn. But uh, I don't think we're going to see any of that until like a few a few years yet. Like it's not to a point where I don't I don't even think we'll see it here in 2024. I think it's more the way they're talking sometime in 2025. Now, when that happens, I think for a lot of people, they might truly start to decide that, hey, maybe I don't need that CRT anymore, you know, because, again, as yeah. we talked tonight. It is one time, of the biggest reasons to have one, for right. sure. Right. Well, I mean, even though I have this little 13-inch uh, CRT, as soon as I uh, 
as soon as I get my Dreamcast's lens fixed, I'll I'll be playing uh, some some light gun games on it. And I, it it just dawned on me that I have two light guns, and I and I do have House of the Dead three for the Xbox. So. I can toss that on here. I mean, yeah, a little teeny tiny screen, but you know, <coughs> at least I can, at least I can still play it. Phil, Phil, Jolt's idea there—that should be a membership video. People, you will get scores of members to come in to watch you play Pac-Man on a black-white TV. <laughs> that sounds like a dare. Just, I'm, I'm, I, I am a member. I was, I was Phil's first member. As soon as he announced it, I. Clicked up. I am a retro bliss member, a bliss buddy. We're gonna call them bliss yeah, buddies. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with Mister Chickens. It, honestly, it's probably gonna look a lot better in black and white because you, you know the blue background <laughs> on the game is one of the worst parts. Yes, oh, it's, yeah. So, I mean, I want that to be a membership white. video. In, Your in, first member requests it. In black and white, it's like. It's Do I have like to smile? Medium gray. No, 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 no. In fact, it'd be funnier if you didn't. <laughs> 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 yeah, just, that's the scowl I want. Set a timer up and see how long you can take it. I'll stream it live. I'll tell you what, I'll stream it live in black and white. How's that? No, it's got to be on a CRT, man. Oh, maybe. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Camera right over your shoulder, one pointing at you. Yeah, yeah I had to have right. two, cameras. two cameras. Yeah. I don't know if I can do that live for, with my. No, I, I, I have a, it's I have a, be a membership video. I have a MacBook. I don't know if I could do it live, though. I could do it, but I don't know if I could do it live. I'll have to look into that. The question would be is how fast would that controller go into the black and white television? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. And with the new with the new modern TV, it won't be a problem. With the, with the old TVs, I go, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm with Mark Racer going to circuit city and getting the crt i remember i got my i think it was my uh that that sony that i bought to replace my other tv i got it at the best buy in perrysburg ohio i, I miss i missed the the perrysburg ohio um even though there's two other best buys around here but uh i i miss going being able to go in there and look at crts I really do. Even just going, yeah, go into any store and seeing that wall of CRTs. It's yeah. nothing says '80s, early '90s more than that. It was. Yeah, that was cool. There's definite, definite nostalgia there. I wonder if we could get enough TVs, and instead of having like a Torg or a Korgs or something like that, we just open up a store that's nostalgic. No, you can't buy the CRTs, but you can come in and look. Donations at the door. Thanks for coming to the museum. So... Well, guess where I went this week. Museum. Hey Scott, guess where I went to Bigfoot's this week? Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah, first yeah, big, time. Bigfoot Gaming, good place, yeah. good place. Yeah, Brian, Brian's good people. I almost drove drove by. He wasn't there though. He wasn't. No, I almost drove by though. There, there's no signage. Did you go to? Yes, that little like looks like a school. Uh, yeah. did did you go into Strange Records? No, no, no. Yeah, yeah I good. just want to let you know that's off subject. Go ahead, as you were. <laughs> Sorry, it's a gaming store. Well, I'll just yeah, about we're, ten minutes we're from talking. my house. It's been I've been here for thirteen years. There's a gaming store like ten minutes away from me. I never knew was here. <laughs> it's just, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was I was just saying that like the C there's something about that CRT wall, and that's why like so many music videos from the '80s and the early '90s had that wall in the background and the neon lights and. And you're dancing in front of that wall of CRTs, and it's really it's not the same. It was it was definitely something different. I I can only imagine going into a, a store or going to some production coordinator or something like that and saying, "Okay, we need fifty C, we need we need fifty televisions," and they're like, "All right," and then they go and they buy all the same TV at like the local Circuit City or something yeah. like that. <clears throat> Give me fifty of those, you know, pretty wild. But. Um... <clears throat> And the other thing, talking about that, you know, who knew that we'd have 50-inch TVs? In the mid-90s, I knew a guy that had a 50-inch TV. 50-inch CRT. This thing was massive. Where? Massive. Out in the world? It was, well. I think they could get that through also, a door. Because the, the, the tube had to be as wide as the, you know what I mean? Well, they were like square. It was a, it was a widescreen CRT. This was probably in like 96. Mm -hmm. 
and it was 50 inches and i remember playing nhl 94 on it and it was amazing but the problem is with the large television you could make really large televisions but the video single signal going to it was still 480p yeah so all you're doing is taking your limited resolution and blowing it up and blowing it up yeah so it's you couldn't similar... get a really good picture unless you were sitting back farther so it is similar to hooking up a modern system through rf to your or sorry a, a retro system through rf to your big screen tv and like brian was mentioning some of them look like absolute garbage yeah <clears throat> nhl 94 didn't though nhl 94 looked awesome um who, i forget who it was it might have been cannabis kid that mentioned uh um uh circuit city uh the brand still exists by the way so you could actually go to circuitcity.com and they actually have or maybe it's dot org or something i don't know whatever and they you can still actually order stuff through the brand i don't know if it's there anything of theirs but it's really weird that somebody bought the brand and still uses it Although, unlike radio shack which is now the source well, they're still and, and doesn't supply. Are they still Radio Shacks? There are still some Radio Shacks. Yes, they're, do they're, they? But do they sell electrical components or all the phone crap that they've got now? I don't know uh, because the lap. Now I remember. Now my my mother in law. She lives in Troy, Ohio, which is just north of Dayton. And uh, up until right, Radio about, Shacks got a website. Right, and they right got before their the logo. pandemic, they they actually still had one in Troy, but I. I think that there's still one someplace in Michigan uh, that I just recently heard of, but is it just a phone store? But I believe they do have some components and stuff too. That's but they, awesome. But they still so you guys that. still have that. We still have Toys R Us. It balances out. Yeah. What do they have? We are renovating. We are renovating. <laughs> Stores. Hashtag, hashtag seriously, we're not closing. Yeah, I remember what like Latin America, South America, and the Caribbean. Uh, see, that looks like that looks like the source right there. That's all. I don't see any capacitors. I don't see any resistors. I wish I could remember where that was, because somebody posted it on Facebook, and they were like, "Oh yeah, there's a Radio Shack near my house, or whatever." We should we should have a. Uh, Retro Bliss Rewind Road Trip, where we go to the like a Radio Shack, the last Blockbuster, just make a tour to all these places. <laughs> that would be. <laughs> Those are pillows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where's your hand? Between two pillows. Those are pillows. <laughs> yes. Bring back Comp USA. I hear that. That's where I bought my first iMac. I got I got it from. Comp USA. Just a quick story on that. My uh, my now ex wife and I we had this this cruddy little uh, this cruddy little computer um, Windows computer. I think it was running Windows ninety five that my father in law had given us, and because he he was a programmer and he worked from his house, and uh, he's like, yeah, here here's a computer for you guys. And uh, I remember she was just you know sitting there banging on the thing, and she looks at me. It's like the middle of January. It was really cold out. She was pregnant with our first son, and she says. Uh, she looks at me and she goes, uh, when can we get our iMac? And I go, grab your coat. So we, we head into this uh, this uh, Comp USA near Cleveland, Ohio. It's uh, It was in North North Olmstead. And we walk in the door and the guy's like, hi, how can I help you? You know, And I'm like, I'm here to buy an iMac. And that's when they had the first you know ones with all the multiple colors, the blueberry, the, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And the guy goes, well, the, uh, the, the PCs are back over here. And I, and I looked at him like stone cold, mean faced. I said... Did I say PC? D does it look like I want a PC? Son, I'm no, not it doesn't look like you know how to use a real computer. No, I don't. Um, <laughs> no, I like my shit to work. Um, but anyway. Um, oh, he's a Mac guy. You know that just by saying I'm PC that. PC master race. Yeah. So uh, I, I, you know, I, I bought enough PCs to know that I don't want any more. But the guy goes, okay, you want a Mac? You want a Mac? I go, exactly. That's what I said. So he goes, well, they're, they're back over here, and I'll be with you in just a minute. And I go, you're excused. Go find me somebody else. Because I knew that they were, you know, they had uh, commission-based commission sales. So he was not going to be eating that day. So there you go. And then we got our you're first. You're kind of a jerk. <laughs> Don't Where care. have you been? 
care. <laughs> I'm kidding. You give Just going to say... You give Sorry, the customer ahead. what they want, and you don't try to placate them. You tr you give them what they want. And he didn't try to placate you. He was like, the PCs are over there. Go get a real computer. And you're like, no! I got a, I actually got a job one time just because the the um, the manager who was interviewing me, she said, what does customer service mean to you? And I said, customer service to me is if somebody comes to me and asks for something and I don't have it, I will actually point to my competitor and say, go get what you need over there because they're going to remember you next time and they're going to come back to you. And she says, you that's a miracle on 34th Street model. Yeah, she she, she said you got the job. I was going to say to uh, Cannabis Kids comment about the Weird Al song. I love that song. First Weird Al cassette I ever bought was uh, Alapalooza and it had Frank's 2000 inch TV on it. Ha has anybody here ever had a CRT self-destruct on them? And I mean in a very violent way. I caused one it? once. <laughs> huh? What'd you do? Take a hammer to it? <laughs> no, I just I... Plugged, I plugged it in. <laughs> when it set itself I... on fire. Yeah, I I uh, was watching TV. I was probably about four years old, and I had one of those trains that was on the string. Yeah, and I was like swinging it around, <laughs> and I put it right through the front of the television, and it exploded oh. in shards all over the basement. Oh no! My dad was not impressed. We also took you know the vacuum attachment that has all the little bristles on it. Yeah. We took that and put it on one of our lamps in the basement where we're playing, and we thought it was really neat because the room started to look like lava because it was the plastic was all melting down. <laughs> we were awful. We were awful. Uh, my uh, my twenty five inch RCA that I had it 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 was in I don't know it it wasn't doing very well, <laughs> and uh, my dad said, well, "Why don't you just take it out to the garage? We're going to be having a garage sale here soon anyway, because that's when I moved back in with my parents after my divorce." And I was getting ready to, to move back. Uh, I was getting ready to move to Bowling Green to, to, to continue school. And uh, he said, why don't we plug it in and check it out? And I go, all right. So I plugged it in, turned it on. And he goes, what's that smell? And I go, oh, man, it's burning. All of a sudden, we heard snap. And it just caught on fire. So he unplugged it real quick. And I ran and got the uh, fire extinguisher. And that was it. You want to hear something you'll really hate? What? That happened to the first Mac I ever bought. <laughs> no. What Mac was it? Uh, it was an iMac. It was an iMac. Because I was graphic. It's like late 90s, all graphics were done on Macs. Yeah. Like now, I never see Mac. Like unless somebody comes in and specifically requests a Mac, most of, at least in my industry, is done on PC. But you had to have a Mac. And yeah, one day I came in, I turned it on, and I was like... <laughs> Just smell that burning, and then a little flame comes up the vent in the back. It's like, That's damn. Funny. That's funny. Hey, Dr. Petrovich just got home from work. Ooh. Awesome. Is it a late, late worker? I can't. Oh, because I, I was four. Brian is much older than four. <laughs> Brian is much older than four. <laughs> yeah, bring up bring up uh, Mr. Chick comment. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of Brian, he's been kind of quiet lately. Yeah, Brian, you're the tech guy here. You should be talking more than us. I know I'm a gabber. Oh uh, no, I, I think we've kind of covered a lot of the main keys, other than because um, I know we're kind of getting low on time here. That. You know, I think at the end of the day, though, it, it really doesn't matter what you're using. It's all about being able to enjoy those retro games. So yeah. if it comes down to if you can play it on a CRT and that's what you enjoy doing, great. If you want the convenience of just something you can simply plug into a modern TV and, you know, play those games and, you know, uh, relive those and you know, try to get a, even new memories with family and things like that with it. I mean... It's it's all about just you know keeping retro gaming going. It doesn't matter what you're using to make it happen. So. Right. Can I say how much I appreciate the fact that somebody that's like Brian here can put a Mister Rogers ending on something where we talked about drilling <laughs> holes and exploding CRTs <laughs> and all that stuff, and he's like, "But really, it doesn't matter. Whatever you love, we're just passionate about gaming." Well, <laughs> Retro Rob earlier did say something about um, you know there. I think he mentioned the Wii or, or, or some, 
or way earlier in the comments. And there are definitely uh, other ways to play some of these games. Like, for example, you can play a, m a more modernized version of House of the Dead, I believe, 1 and 2 on the Switch. And you can, uh, but I've heard the game. I've got hard. it on the Wii. Yeah. I, you and know, it's fantastic. On the Wii, it's good. I, I know that House of the Dead uh, 1 and 2, I was playing on the, I, I want to say the Saturn, or maybe it was the Dreamcast. I forget. Oh, with I the was, light gun, yeah. It was a Dreamcast. And because they also had Typing of the Dead. Um, but you know, the, the Sony move controller, you know, you just hook that little camera up there and, and you used it. That thing works very well. So if you have a PS3, that works great. Um, you know, the, the, the Wii and the Wii U, those things work great. I, I'm sure now I have not played any of the light gun type, mind you, I say light gun type games for the switch yet, but I would like to try that, um, house of the dead. So there are modern day options. When I say modern, I mean within yep. the last say 10, 15 years. Um, and it would be nice if these guys did, cause like, I know that the connect is dead just because the connect wasn't that great. Anyway, the technology was good. Just the games were not. And the implementation of them, it, it, they just didn't do a very good job with that. It was but, a cool idea executed. Yeah. Not great. Right, because when you're actually taking those cameras, whether it be the first one or the second one, and there are people in different industries using them for motion capture and, and, and stuff like that, as opposed to using them for actual games, then you know that you did something wrong. You know, yeah. because if the technology can be used for something else better than for your game console, you did something wrong. My kids like to connect games. I, I have Who's one that? connect game that I would like to try out that I do have here, but I, I haven't connected. I've never connected my connect up ever. So I'll have to give it a try. I, I will say just, I'll let you continue in a sec, but with the Wii, Wii is one of the easiest systems to modify to emulate tons of stuff. And there's little plastic things that you could put the Wii mode in that makes it a gun. It is perfect for light gun games for all, all the old systems. Yeah, I, I had one of the shotgun ones once, and that was great. Uh, yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, and then I uh, had one that's a sniper rifle, had a little plastic. I do have on. two of the little pistol ones, and those are really nice too. And then I like those a lot. What was the one that they came out with? And it, and it, it it came with the ones. It was like a Zelda light gun game. You remember which one I'm talking about? Oh yes, uh, the crossbow training yeah, game yeah. or whatever. It's yeah, awesome. and it had so you could use the nunchuck. Yeah. On the on the thing to move around and then the front was the the gun yeah that, that uh there was also uh bad. the cabela hunting games came with stuff yeah oh yeah that's right yeah 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 the 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 uh the xbox 360 um i remember i because i still have one of those i have uh the cabela dangerous hunt i want to say 2013 yeah and it actually came with a sensor bar, a wireless sensor bar, and it worked very, very well. Yeah. Um, and and the uh, the rifle that came with it actually worked very nicely too. So yeah, I mean there there are options out there other than having a CRT. It's just I don't think that I think that for example Sony and Microsoft kind of dropped the ball with the last couple of generations instead of going, hey, let's put something out there that's fairly simple that a lot of people are going to gravitate gravitate to that's not going to cost that much. No, no, I got a better idea. Let's come out with this connect that nobody's going to use or let's come out with now don't, you know, in the comments and, and people will see this later, don't go crazy and start, you know, crucifying me when I say, let's come out with these really expensive peripherals to hook up to the PlayStation 5 and the PlayStation 4, namely the the PS VR, which have very very a very small audience because those things cost $500 on their own and you can't use them by themselves. You have to actually hook it up to the, to the console you already have. I'm part of that small audience. My PS4 was like, cause I prefer the Xbox controller. Right. I usually play Xbox. It's not that I prefer the system. I just prefer the controller. Sure. So and my there's PS4, nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah, there's nothing wrong there's, with that. I, but I always have to specify that because PlayStation and Xbox people hate each other, and I don't get that at all. I've got both. I've got but both my too. PlayStation 4 was basically a VR box, and I got that gun. Speaking of guns, that gun with the little PS Move ball on the front of it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Play every single VR game that you could play with that, play with that. It is that, so, so good. That gun is fantastic for SOCOM 4 on the PS3. Three. Is it 3? 
or four. I forget which system it's for. I think it's for the PS3, and it that that thing just makes the game worth playing. And there's a few games that are that are that 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 gun is fantastic for for putting your PlayStation yeah. Move controller in. Yeah, but yeah. that's the thing is you know there's nothing wrong with coming out with something like the PSVR, but just mind you, that audience is going to be far far more limited. limited. As opposed to saying, "Hey, we're going to come out with, we're actually going to produce something that you can play some light gun games, and we can bring some new games yeah. and some other games, retro games, arcade games back that you really like, and they'll sell. They'll sell easily and quickly. As opposed to, you know, not many people have five hundred bucks just to go blow on a peripheral, and that and that's what Which, the PSVR up here in VR Canada is seven hundred bucks, right?" So, in, you know, not a lot of people are going to buy, you know, buy a peripheral for that much. And it is a peripheral. Well, guys, you know what? I th I thought uh, this subject was going to be like a 30 minute, <laughs> a 30 minute podcast, but it turned out to be a, a good one. It was, it, we had a lot of good conversation tonight. I really enjoyed it. And it looks like uh, everybody who joined the podcast enjoyed it as well. So, um uh, and uh, Brian had a good, good uh, thought about you know, hey, whatever you guys enjoy playing, if you like enjoy the CRTs, you know, do what you, do what you got to do, right. you know. And you know what? You, did, you didn't say it as gracefully and Mister no. Rogers like as Brian said it. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. You know, um, if that's what you enjoy, then 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 play it that way. If if you prefer to play it on a on a modern screen, then do it that way. If you like both, like some of us do, you know there are those of us here that do it in both ways. You get a splitter and play ways. on two screens at one time. <laughs> I can't play it on. I can't play it right on one screen. Somebody <laughs> but had a, on two. <laughs> somebody had a great picture. I believe it was in Korg's or the Ohio Retro Gamer, and I think it was yesterday. I wish I would have saved it. And they had this beautiful setup with like four CRTs in, in their in their basement gaming room. And it was just beautiful. And had I known, I would have grabbed that and given it to you just to show it to everybody here in the show because whoever had this set up, it was just beautiful. And if you end up watching this show later, uh, you know, say so in the comments because this was, it was just a beautiful, beautiful setup. All right. a couple, and a couple quick things before we close out looking at the comments. I just got behind a little bit on them. But uh, uh, Mark, I'm glad to know there was actually someone else who bought Martian Panic for the Wii because I know that was a kind of a budget title and yeah. but you know for what it was for the price, I mean yeah, I mean I, I I had fun with it. I mean it's not gonna win any awards by any means, but uh, but I mean it's a very simple game and I think at the time I spent ten bucks for it and you know it came with the plastic piece to put the Wii mode in and stuff and uh, for what it was, I, I liked it. I actually think they also remade it here on the Switch too. If if you want to get it on a on a newer console, and uh, and Jolt, uh, yeah, that was the Super Soap Scope Six, and uh, yeah, that thing was a beast for being a light gun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it wasn't fun to play with. I've got one; no. it sits in the box. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, um, listen. Can well, I mention ahead. one last thing? I know you said in the private chat we need to wrap up, wrap up. But with <laughs> cannabis talking about the fun facts with zappers, did you know? And for the, I saw one in person for the first time, and they let me hold it. It was they were charging ten thousand dollars for it at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. I did mention in my video, but the U.S. military contracted Nintendo to make a light gun game for them, and they had a an M16 light gun. That was full size, full thing. They're incredibly it have, rare. It might have been for the Super Nintendo. Yes. It was it no, it been. was the Super Nintendo. It was absolutely for the Super Nintendo. <laughs> and it was but but no 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 no. Okay, so it used the Super Nintendo, but it was for the military. And I got to actually hold one and it was incredible. It was like holding a real rifle. <laughs> That's the game I'm going to be doing a video on. <clears throat> shh, shh. That, that's the well, one now I'm going to scoop you on it. I'm putting a video out tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Work all night on it. Yeah, yeah but we, we don't want, want rust. We want something quality. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's 
that's fair. Scott <laughs> makes good videos. I know it's really surprising for something like that to just walk into a video game store, though. So I, I had it in my hands, and I was like, "This is the coolest thing ever," and I I can't wait to check it out because, uh, well, you know, I mean, John John's just a fun. Uh, John makes me laugh, <clears throat> so if I'm gonna be sitting there having fun with this game with you know with the guy who bought it, you know, I'm gonna be having a good time, and hopefully, whoever watches the video will too. So I'm gonna. <laughs> well, quit talking. Yep. I didn't get to play it. I just got to hold it. I forgot what movie it is. This is what you're doing. This is what I want you to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's Phil's cue for us to all the, you know, <laughs> the, the, the wrap this up. So. <laughs> all right, guys. Yeah, you have to end it now. 69 minutes. 69. End it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay guys all right guys thanks for hanging out um description check the uh the links in the description you guys uh subscribe to all the channels appreciate you guys being here and uh we'll be we'll be on next week i don't i'm not exactly sure what the topic's going to be but we will be on next week uh if everything goes well so with that y'all have an awesome day and we'll see you next time on retro bliss rewind take care bye bye, -bye. see you guys